Hello and welcome to the second video of the FP2 chapter, First Order Differential Equations. On the screen, something to review our previous video. Find the general solution of this equation where t is greater than or equal to zero. With first order differential equations, the first thing to look for is always whether or not you can separate the variables. Here we can, so we will. We get 1 over square root of x dx is equal to dt. Now I'll just make that look a little bit nicer. x to the minus a half dx equals dt. Now I'm ready to integrate both sides. The integral of x to the minus a half is x to the half divided by half gives me a 2 on this side, t, and now we need the constant of integration, plus c, and then it's convention to write this variable in terms of this variable, so I need x in terms of t, which gives me t plus c over 2, all squared, where t is greater than or equal to 0. And here is the general solution. In this video, we're going to look at solving first order differential equations by applying an integrating factor, which is all to do with exact differential equations. So we've got our three different methods here, depending on its form. If you can, separate the variables. If you cannot, for example, something like this, the variables x and y simply cannot be separated, then we can use an exact differential method. And while a lot of the video will focus on something called the integrating factor, keep in mind that the whole point of an integrating factor is to create an exact differential equation in order to use the method that we're going to discuss first. So exact differential equation method, here we go. This method comes from considering the product rule for differentiation. The product rule is this, and the idea behind an exact differential equation is if you can see this pattern, then you know it has come from something like this, and integrating this will get you directly to uv. So the pattern I'm referring to is if you can see in the first term a function that has its derivative in the second term, and in the second term a function that has its derivative in the first term. That's the pattern we're looking for. For example, this one here that we had on the previous screen. Here we've got x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x. Here we've got y, the derivative of y with respect to x is dy by dx. Don't worry about the right hand side for now. This part here follows this pattern. That means that the function u and v here, x squared and y, will be a product when we integrate this. So this will integrate to give x squared y. If I put a middle step in there, we've got the derivative with respect to x of x squared y. And this is the same as the left hand side here. And that must equal 3 sine x. So when we integrate both sides with respect to x, the integral and the derivative here effectively cancel out. And we get x squared y. And on the right hand side you do the integration using whichever process you need. In this case it's just a direct integration. Sine x integrates to give minus cosine x. So we get minus 3 cosine x. And because we've done both integrations there I can put a plus c on the right here. So once you see this pattern you can write it like this and then the integration is effectively just cancelling the derivative. So that makes that really easy on the left. A quick example of this before we get to integrating factors. Here we can see x cubed differentiates to give 3x squared and y differentiates to give dy by dx. So this has come from the derivative x cubed y. So I can write it in that form. On the right, still sine x. Now when I integrate both sides, this effectively cancels out and we get x cubed y on the left and minus cosine x plus c on the right. And I think that demonstrates quite nicely how easy this is once you've seen that pattern. The question that naturally follows, however, is what if you don't have an exact differential equation? What if it's something like this? Here you can't separate the variables, but it's also not an exact differential equation. We've got a 1 here. 1 does not differentiate to give 3 over x. 
although y does differentiate to give dy by dx, this does not fit the pattern. And I've deliberately chosen a very easy example here. You can see it's the same equation as this. All you need to do is multiply everything by x cubed, and it will be in this form, which will be an exact differential equation. And the point here is to say that you might be able to make it into an exact differential equation. Of course, they won't all be this easy. So then we get the same question. What happens if it's not so obvious how to make it into an exact differential equation? But we can still do this. And there is a general method for this. So I'm going to go through the method, and this is where we get to the thing called the integrating factor. Now we've got to be very clear here. This only applies to differential equations of this format here, where we've got dy by dx plus p, where although I haven't written the little brackets x, this is a function of x times y is equal to q, and again, although I haven't written the brackets with the x, this also is a function of x. I haven't written the little bracket x because generally you don't see it written there. I'm not entirely sure why, but these are functions of x. Keep that in your mind. And if your equation looks like this or can be made to look like this with a bit of rearranging, then you can make this into an exact differential equation by multiplying through by a very carefully chosen function, which we call the integrating factor. In our previous example, the integrating factor was x cubed. But how do you know what that function should be? Well, we start with the assumption that it does exist. If it exists, let's call it f of x. And what we're going to have to do with that so as not to change what the equation is saying is multiply each term by f of x to give this. Now, assuming this is all going to work, we've got y here differentiating to give dy by dx. That's what we need. And then we've got f of x here, some function of x. And for this pattern to hold so that we can do the reverse product rule, this must give a differentiation f of x times p. So I can write that the derivative of f of x must be f of x times p. So f prime x is equal to f of x times p. From here, we can do some simple rearranging to write p must equal f prime of x divided by f of x. Now you might think that's not very useful because we already know what p is. It will be given to us in the question. But take a look at the other side. This is a function underneath its own derivative. If we integrate this, it will give us the natural log of the function f of x. So let's go ahead and do that. We're integrating both sides with respect to x. On the left hand side, I won't actually do the integral. But on the right hand side, I will. And because there's more integration to come, I won't put a constant of integration there. Now we can raise both sides as a power on e. So we get e to the integral p with respect to x, whatever p is, equals e raised to the power of a natural log. They cancel out and we get f of x. So this is telling us the function that we need to use in order to make this part of this term the derivative of this, which will make this side an exact differential equation. Now, while we're doing all of this, we are, of course, making a change to the right hand side. And we're assuming as part of this that we will be able to integrate this once we get there. But this thing here is the key idea. If I take all of that off, we get this. So the two important things when you're doing differential equations of this type is, first of all, to recognize this format. And if you see this format, to remember how to find the integrating factor f of x. And I'll finish with three examples of this. So these are the key points up here in white. And here is our equation. First of all, can we separate the variables? No, we can't. OK, secondly, is it in this format? Yes, we've got dy by dx here. We've got a y over here and a function of x as a multiplier. So p, if I write that out, p is equal to minus 1 over x. And over here, we've got x, so that's our q. Don't really need to write this out, but just to be clear. Now we need the integrating function. So f of x is always equal to e to the integral of p dx. That's always true. In this example, p is equal to minus 1 over x.
Now the integral of minus 1 over x is minus a log of x, natural log of x. Remembering our log rules, I can write that as e to the natural log of x to the minus 1. And then the e in the natural log cancel out, and this gives me x to the minus 1 as my integrating factor. Now I go back to the question, and I have to multiply every term in the equation by the integrating factor. As I do that, I'll change everything into index form. So I've got x to the minus 1 times dy by dx. There's already a minus x to the minus 1 there, so when I multiply by this, I get x to the minus 2y. And on the right, I get x times x to the minus 1 is just a 1. So in this case, our integrating factor has simplified the right-hand side. That will not usually happen. Usually it'll get more complicated. And on the left, I'm just going to check if I differentiate x to the minus 1, I get minus x to the minus 2. Yes. If I differentiate y, I get dy by dx. Yes. This is now an exact differential. And I can put this, as we did before, in this format. Then I integrate both sides with respect to x. And over here we get x plus c, and over here we get x minus 1, y. Rewriting y as a function of x, we get x squared plus cx as our final general solution. As you see, as we go through the other two examples, it's exactly the same method every time. The only difference is the functions involved. So it might be slightly more complicated here, or when you come to do this integration, you might find that you have to use one of your other processes like integration by parts or something like that. So let's have a look at the next one. First question, can we separate the variables? No. Second question, is it in this format? No, it is not in this format. So before I do anything, I'm going to rearrange it so dy by dx is by itself. I'll multiply by x to the minus a half. Now it's in the correct format, I can see that p is equal to x to the minus a half, which means my integrating factor, f of x, is going to be e to the integral x to the minus a half dx. Integrating that will give me e to the 2x to the half. Obviously not such a nice function as the previous one, but now we need to multiply every term in the equation by this. And here's a really easy place to make a mistake. Do not multiply this equation by the integrating factor. Multiply this equation by the integrating factor. And that will give us e to the 2x to the half dy by dx plus e to the 2x to the half x to the minus a half y is equal to e to the 2x to the half times x to the minus a half here as well. Okay, that looks much, much worse, but don't panic because now we've got it in this correct form. This part of this term differentiates to give this, and this part of this term differentiates to give this. So I can simplify all of that by writing it as d by dx of e to the 2x to the half times y. And the whole point of this is that integrating that will be really easy. We just get rid of the derivative. On the right, we've got e to the 2x to the half times x to the minus a half. And don't panic with that either, because we can see from what we just did here, this is the same as this. And we said that this thing differentiates to give this. So when we integrate this, don't start thinking integration by parts or anything like that. This just integrates to give this. Now, this won't always happen. You won't always get the same thing here as you put here. But in this example, that will make that integration on the right a little bit easier. So on the left, we just get e to the 2x to the half y is equal to, on the right, e to the 2x to the half plus c. Rearranging to make y the subject, we get 1 plus c e to the minus 2x to the half. Third and final example, dy by dx cos x plus y sin x equals tan x. Again, can we separate variables? No. Is it in this format? No. Quickly rearrange this by dividing everything by cos x. 
that will give us dy by dx plus y times sine over cos is 10x is equal to 10x over cos is 10x times sec x. And I've written it as sec rather than divided by cos because I know tan and sec connect quite a lot when we start integrating one or the other. Now this is in this format where p is equal to tan of x. So my integrating factor is e to the integral tan of x dx. The integral of tan of x is the natural log of sec x, which is nice because the e and the log cancel out and we get sec x as our integrating factor. Now we multiply this equation by sec x on every term, and that gives us sec x dy by dx plus y tan x sec x is equal to tan x sec squared x. On the left, again, just check this differentiates to give this, sec x differentiates to give tan x sec x. So all of that left-hand side can be rewritten as the derivative of y sec x. And on the right, we've still got this. Integrate both sides with respect to x, we get y sec x on the left and on the right you need to remember your tan and sec connections if you differentiate tan you get sec squared x so this is a function multiplied by its own derivative so that has come from this function raised to another power so if i raise the power on this and we get tan squared then tan squared would differentiate to give 2 tan x sec squared x, but I don't have a 2, so I also need a half in there. Plus c for the constant of integration, and here is a good example of where you need to keep in your mind all of those other processes that you know for integrating, because to integrate the right-hand side, you might be required to call on any one of those other processes. Final answer then, we need to multiply everything by cos x to get rid of this, and that gives us y is equal to half tan squared x cos x plus c times cos x. And that is our final general solution. In any one of these, you might have been asked to find a particular solution, but if that was the case, you would need boundary conditions given in the question. So a quick summary of the three things that we've done so far. In the first video, we looked at separating the variables if it was in this form. And in this video, we've done two things. We've talked about the exact differential equation in this format, where you can use the reverse idea of the product rule. And then we talked about this form, which uses an integrating factor this in order to create something in this form so that you can then do this. That should be enough for you to have a go at the questions in exercise 5b. And maybe I'll see you in the third video for some substitution.